All right, another episode in uh, Odessa. And who's with me now? My name is Alex Gonchirenko. I am Odessa Regional Councilor. And uh, previously, I used to be um, uh, the first Vice President of Odessa Regional Council. For what party? From Party of Regions. The head, um, Mr. Yanukovych, was the head of this party. And now you're not anymore? No, I left the party in February during the protests in Kiev. Of course, when I saw like uh, government began to shoot at people, uh, I'm to show my protest against this. I left the party and I left my position of the first vice president. So now the uh, Yanukovych is gone. Are you happy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> good question. Uh, I think no. It's better for me that Mr. Yanukovych uh, should go to the court to answer the questions. What questions? About why did he order to shoot at people? Did he? Um, as I understand, yes. And uh, also there are questions about... Uh, now He, um, I have a very big question to him because he made a letter to Mr. Putin, who is the president of Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, in this letter, Mr. Yanukovych asked Mr. Putin to send military forces to Ukraine. I think it's a treason. Why would he do that? I don't know. He he asked another, uh, like, uh, Putin to come to help? Yeah. Not to Mr. Putin to come, but uh, Mr. Putin military forces. But didn't Yan Yanukovych was a president. Didn't he have his own forces, his own army? Uh, it was, I th as I understand, uh, he did it when he was leaving the country. And it was his idea that he can go back to the country with Russian military forces. But I think it's a real treason against the country, against the state, and he should go to the court now. So um, maybe maybe tell us, like, uh, how how could this whole Maidan and this revolution happen? Like, what 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 did he do? What did your party do wrong? Uh, it was uh, the next situation. Uh, our party, in, in our party program, it was written that strategic aim of Ukraine is uh, integration with the European Union and association and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was great. I'm pro-European pro politic and uh, I really think that the future of Ukraine is with uh, the big Europe, big European family. Uh, but uh, in November, Mr. Yanukovych uh, changed his mind and he told that, no, stop, uh, we need to make some delay, uh, some stop in this uh, movement to Europe uh, and began his uh, negotiations with Russia. Uh, did, did, did he tell you about it uh, in your party? Did, they, did no. he let, let you know it in no. advance? No, nobody asked us, nobody asked the party. It was like he is the president, and he saw, said, "Okay, uh, now I think we should make a stop." It's not really very democratic. Ah, uh, yeah, I think so too. And uh, so the first, and all these events began. I made my own declaration here on the regional level that uh, I am pro-European and I want to see Ukraine in Europe. Uh, but um, so, then, so you protested uh, in your own party? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, and not uh, as and not many of us, but not only me. Mm -hmm. um, but Mr. Yanukovych told that uh, uh, no, it's not like final stop. We will uh, carry on this movement to Europe, but now we need a little stop because uh, this association agreement is not prepared very good, and uh, there are questions about uh, Ukrainian. Uh, factories and so on, Ukrainian economics, which are not uh, properly um, uh, discussed in this, uh, negotiation, in this association agreement. So we began to wait for this, uh, but then we saw the next thing in January, Mr. Yanukovych and our party of regions in the parliament, uh, they accepted uh, new laws, which were like Police laws, yeah. because uh, they told that people can, th they try to uh, struggle with the peaceful meetings of people, with the movement of cars, like in the columns, um, and so on. And for example, it's impossible to, 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 to say the name of the um, judge 
who made some, I don't know, decision which I don't like. And uh, they told, no, no, judges are judges and pol policemen. They are like out of any control. And uh, it was a very big mistake. And uh, once again, I made my declaration here. And uh, many people joined me. And also during the session of regional council, I uh, had a speech. I mean, it's on the local level. I don't want to say that it's like very, it was very important on the whole country, but it was important for me yeah. because it was, yeah. And, uh, uh, because of the pressure of Maidan, uh, Mr. Yanukovych, uh, um, took back his decision about these laws mm -hmm. and they were canceled. Mm -hmm. And there was like, for me, I hoped that Oh, great. Probably now we will find some peaceful uh, resolution of this conflict and then we will go on to Europe. With, but, with Yanukovych. Uh, yeah, Mr. Yanukovych, that he, now he understood his mistakes and now we will go to Europe. Was that before the violence? Uh, yeah, it was when, and then after this, violence begins. Oh. Uh, violence began, and uh, for me it was like a uh, final stop in the party because I, 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 when I entered the party, there was no any speech about violence, about police laws, about moving to Russia, and I said no, I don't like it, and I left the party, and I left my position of uh, the first vice president of original council. Uh, that's all. Did your, did your party hate you for that? Were they like, what are you doing? You have to support this. Uh, at the, one of us. At the, yeah, at the beginning, yes. Uh, it was a session of regional council and they said that I'm, uh, um, bad person to do it and because it's a very important moment for the party and we all need to support our president. Yes, but uh, in not in, in several days the situation changed because Mr. Yanukovych uh, began to Mr. Yanukovych left the country, and many people from Party of Regions left this party. But the, it were they left party after the crush of Mr. Yanukovych, and I left the party before Mr. Yanukovych le uh, left the country. Before the ship sank. Before yeah yeah before the ship sank yeah, yeah. absolutely, uh, when the ship was firing from all the cannons. At this moment, the, red, I, the rats were like, oh, yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. And this moment, um, no, at this moment, the rats were inside of the ship and me not. I left it because I don't want to shoot from the cannon. I, I, I disagree with this. So why, why, I mean, why didn't you as a party just say, okay, we get rid of Yanukovych and then, uh, and, 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 and vote for a, a new leader? Yeah, it's impossible in Ukraine. I understand your question, but in Ukraine, uh, all parties, they are, uh, not so ideological, but they are leader after the leader. So, uh, party. So autocratic, more autocratic. Yeah. No, no, I mean, not more autocratic, but when they are organized, they are not organized around some idea, but they are more organized around some person. So there is a leader, and he is like the leader of the party, and we have a party. And when leader left the country, and There's leader, no party. there is no party. And uh, yeah. That's crazy. Uh, probably, but it's the beginning of democracy, you know. I mean, what, what, I mean what, what, in many countries it begins like this way, because, uh, then, uh, uh, from day to day, uh, uh, new parties established, which are like organized by people, and people can change the leader and so on. But uh, in Ukraine now, it's uh, the opposite situation. Were you, were you in the party ten years ago with the first revolution? Uh, no, I I entered the party after the first revolution when it was in opposition. Like, didn't the revolution oust Yanukovych? Like, uh, it was the first revolution. I think the first one, it's it's not revolution. We can call it revolution, yeah, but... Uh, the orange. Orange, yeah, but it was not revolution. Because revolution, the word revolution for me, means some uh, really systematic changes. And after the orange revolution, no systematic changes appear, happened. Uh, there was change of uh, one person. Oh, they uh, changed the heads. Yeah, they changed the heads, and it's not revolution. So, after, but after the orange revolution, new power, new Mr. Yushchenko, it was president, and uh, he began to make many mistakes, 
against Russian speaking people. I'm Russian speaking. My mother tongue is Russian. Many mistakes. And uh, I decided I was not uh, very active in politics at this time. I was very young. But when I saw that uh, Mr. Yushchenko, he did something wrong, I decided that I should join the opposition to struggle with him. And the main opposition party was part of regions because of Mr. Yanukovych, who was, who was uh, struggling with Yushchenko for the presidency. So I joined part of regions in 2005. It was nine years ago. And um, wh why didn't you um, like found your own party? Me? Yeah, I, mean, uh, I, I was. Mean, I mean, it's a good idea, but I was 24 uh, years old, and it was quite difficult. We have our in our country. We have 45 millions of people, mm. so uh, to do it in 24 years, I think it's difficult. So, but then at some point, Yanukovych got back onto power. Yeah, and then uh, there were next elections, first parliamentary elections. And then presidential elections in 2010, and Mr. Yanukovych was elected to the president. These elections were absolutely transparent and free. Uh, there were a lot of people from Europe, from USA, who were observing the elections. And all of them told that these elections are free and transparent, and it was true. Uh, so he was really elected president. So, so he was not a dictator? Like no, 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 no. He was elected absolutely free oh. on the elections. So it was not big uh, difference between him and uh, Mrs. Timoshenko, oh. who was his opponent, but uh, it was like free decision of Ukrainian people. But why, I mean, after he won, didn't he put her in jail? Yeah. It do, you, do you do that with your opponents? Do you do this here in your city? Well, you're like, uh, okay, I'll, one, in you our, go to jail. In our city, nobody is in jail. No, my, my opponents are not in jail. But uh, why, Mrs. Why, why would he do that? Why would he? Uh, there, was a, there was a court. It was a court, a court decision that uh, she is guilty. And because of uh, the gas contracts with Russia. So it's hard to say. I want to say you that uh, we have many questions to Mrs. Timoshenko, not uh, less uh, about her activity and many questions. When she, when she was a prime minister, uh, corruption in our country was very big, like it is now. And, uh, There were many problems. We had uh, very big economical problems. We have uh, minus minus nine percent in uh, G in uh, uh, GDP. GDP, yes, and uh, we have very big devaluation of national currency and many economical problems. So I don't consider Mrs. Timoshenko like a strong leader, and I don't want to. Uh, and for me, I, 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 when it was elections of 2010, uh, I didn't want her to see, to see her the president of Ukraine. I like, and I talk to a lot of people now, and many people say there shouldn't be another oligarch as president. I mean, Yanukovych was one, Timoshenko is an oligarch, so uh, you, you, you say. I okay. don't think it's, a uh, Uh, about oligarch, it's uh, the different situation. For example, mayor of New York is, was Mr. Bloomberg, who, who is very rich, mm -hmm. who is richer than many of our oligarchs, so-called. So it's not the question of uh, the fortune. It's not the question of number of money. It's a question of whether you are a politic or businessman. Because uh, many of our politics, they are really businessmen, and they do politics like a business project. This is the problem. And oh, they, they, they don't know the difference. Huh? Don't they know the difference? Like, uh, uh, probably it, they it, know. If you have a politician, you, you uh, have to help everybody and not your own business. Nah, yeah, I agree with you. But uh, in our country, and not only in our country, it's in transitional countries, uh, often we can see that, and not only in transitional countries, look at Italy. I mean, Mr. Berlusconi, and uh, I, I think that it's a problem which we can see in many countries of the world, that people are trying to make business in politics. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. If a rich person, he came, for example, um, uh, there is a very rich person in Ukraine. His name is Mr. Poroshenko. Uh, chocolate King. Yeah, Chocolate King, uh, absolutely. And now, he, and uh, now he probably he will go for the president. We don't know it yet, but it's very, I think it's very possible. And for example, me, uh, I I would like to support him. 
I see him like the best candidate. But he's an oligarch as well. Uh, yeah, he's a very rich person, but he told that uh, if uh, he will go to the president, he will stop any business projects. He will never make any other business. He will... So he will give uh, his uh, uh, his business to management of people. Some, I mean, not he who will manage his business. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you should start now. Not now. I mean, if he's serious and he, if he's running, maybe you should start now. Yeah, I think so. But we don't know if, if he will run. I think if he will run, he will do it. What about Klitschko? Why, why don't you? Why wouldn't you support Klitschko? He's not an oligarch. He's uh, not, he's not, not, not uh, what rich. do you mean? Uh, he's not oligarch. He's also a rich person, like for Ukraine, very rich. Not so rich, but uh, but, but he he couldn't be like as president uh, support his own business. Like he couldn't be like. But for me, is, yeah, you know. But for me, it's more understandable when person was a good businessman, then he can became a good uh, politician. Then he was good boxer. Then he be can became become a good politician. Uh, for me, I'm not sure in this. So um, you say, what I understand, like it's a, a bad idea to just change heads. Like uh, 10 years ago, we need fundamental yeah. change. So what about, is it revolution or not, this one? Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. And uh, the answer is, I don't know. No, Today, not, yet. We, don't not we yet. we don't know yet. Because uh, if only ch heads will change, it's not a revolution. And it will be a great problem for Ukraine because 100 people died. And uh, they died for uh, like better future, not for changing of heads. And so you, uh, so you need an institutional changes, change. Yeah. But what, what, what like what specifically? Uh, the main thing is uh, corruption and struggle with corruption. If we will see that re really corrupt, because before in Ukraine during these years, corruption became like absolutely normal part of life. It was like absolutely normal. So everybody knows that there is corruption. Everybody uses it. Somebody gives money. Somebody takes money. Uh, and it's normal. And I hope, and this is very important for, for, I, for the country and for me also, that uh, the um, understanding of people will change, that people will say, no, corruption is not normal. I don't say, I think that corruption is in any country of the world. But the question is of the volume of this corruption, and the question is in, in, in people's attitude to corruption. If people will say, no, it's not normal, and we don't want it to go on, so it will be a revolution. And I will say, yeah, it was revolution, and it's successful. Uh, if nothing will change, uh, it is not revolution, it, it's a catastrophe for Ukraine. Because, uh, I think that the main problem of Ukraine is not Russia, is not uh, uh, poverty, is not uh, economical problems, but the main problem is corruption. Ukraine is a very rich country, and if we will struggle to tackle the corruption, I mean not for 100%, but like in serious volume, uh, I th Ukraine can be a very rich country, and people can be really more prosperous. Hmm. So, um, d and the second thing I want also to add, and the second thing is that before all these events, I, I mean, uh, also now I, all, I also sp tell about Crimean crisis. Before all of this, uh, Ukraine was like divided country in western part, west, western central part, and eastern southern part, and uh, people. Uh, You know, when it, when Ukraine became independent, it was like, a, like, like a gift from the gods. It was very easy. So Soviet Union collapsed and Ukraine became independent. Great. But uh, in history, from history, we know that in general, to receive independence, it's much more difficult to keep it, to, keep it, to receive and to keep it. And now, I, as I feel, it's the historical moment for Ukraine to pay for this independence, all these problems, this revolution, these people who were killed uh, from both sides, not only protesters were killed, but also policemen were killed, less people, but, but, but still. And uh, this Crimean crisis, this attack from Russia, all of this is now is uniting Ukrainians to one really political nation, real nation. 
And this is very important. If this will happen, that after all these events, we will have like real politi pol political nation in Ukraine and we will struggle corruption. It, it, I, I'm sure that it will mean that Ukraine will be a prosperous, um, successful European country. So the whole world is, uh, is uh, looking onto Crimea right now. Yeah. What, what, can you explain real quick what, what has happened uh, in the last couple of weeks? I I was several times in Crimea myself, and I I saw it by my eyes, and uh, its occupation by Russian for military forces. It's very funny to hear from Mr. Putin that these guys are not Russian military forces. That uh, the all the equipment and weapon that they have, they bought it probably in some shop. Uh, he told this uh, in his interview in Moscow. Uh, that it's possible that he doesn't know who are these people because it's possible to buy all of this stuff in any shop. Uh, so these people, I don't know where, bought uh, heavy weapons. Also, they bought uh, heavy armored vehicles uh, and so on and so on. And now they occupied the Ukrainian territory, which is Crimea. Um, they want to organize referendum in this Sunday. Uh, this Sunday, uh, March 16. That, that fast? Yeah, that fast. And the second one, you know, it would be great referendum when around uh, hundreds of people who are armed with the weapons and they're going like around you. So you're really free to make your decision. So, so, so it's like you have to make a decision with a gun to your head? Yeah, well. yeah. It's, it's this kind of uh, making decision. Yeah. That's, that's weird. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Uh, and also, uh, journalists in Crimea are attacked. Uh, people with another point of view are attacked. For example, I I tried to go to Ukrainian military forces uh, in Simferopol uh, to give them sh chocolate, cigarettes, so to say them that we are supporting them, like moral support. Uh -huh. And I was attacked by more than ten uh, people. There is a video of this. They try they tried to beat me only because uh, am I uh, no no Russian soldiers can only shoot at me because they the Russian soldiers are polite people they are like you go in uh, in the city but they are not beating anybody but there are people like strange people who call themselves self defense uh these people are partly Crimean people but partly people from Russia and uh, partly I don't know who are they at all and uh, they, they are very aggressive Many of them are drunk, and uh, if they see if they see person who is like not for joining of Russia to Russia, not for joining, not for Crimea to join Russia. If uh, the person has another point of view, they know only one answer: it's to beat this person, uh, and it's absolutely abnormal. Wow. Uh, yeah, and. Um, for the 20, 21st century in the in Europe, uh, it's difficult to imagine, but it happens. So, who should decide what ha what happens on Crimea or with the Crimeans, the Crimeans themselves, the Ukrainian people, UN? Like, how how is can this conflict be solved? I think that uh, for certainly Ukrainians should do it. Not any military forces of any country can jo can enter the country. Can you imagine that for French military forces will enter Germany and will go with a uh, weapon in your cities? I think it's impossible and it's abnormal and it's um, against any international laws and rules. So you mean like we have American troops still there, so that American troops would go on the streets and control and control the streets and uh, control airport, control uh, now uh, they first of all they they took under control the Parliament of Crimea. It was the first thing that they have done, that they did. So I think that really uh, people in Crimea they have a, uh, they have a right. To, to tell, to, to, to decide what do they want. But uh, it's, uh, it, it can be done under, with the gun uh, near the head. And also it can be done, for example, all Ukrainian TV channels are now blocked in Crimea. No Ukrainian TV channel is, has a possibility to, 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 to show in Crimea, but all Russian TV channels can. And Russian TV channels, they're telling a lot of things which are not true. For propaganda. Example, 
propaganda yet because I can tell you I was uh, um, uh, invited to Moscow to the first channel of Russia. It was a political talk show. It was, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And uh, when I was there, I was like really shocked because they told that now if you are speaking Russian in Ukraine, you can be killed by some Nazi who are like uh, people, Ukrainian Nazi who can do it. Probably uh, Yeah, for example. And uh, I told that I'm Russian speaking, I'm from Odessa, nobody kills nobody. And you can see it in our city that people are, uh, gen in general people speak Russian. Nobody kills them for this, nobody beats them for this. It's absolutely not true. But uh, it was very difficult to, d to have debates with them. And then it was very funny when uh, they invited me. I asked, uh, w will it be live? Yeah. And they told me, yeah, it will be live. But then uh, it happens that it was live, but for Vladivostok. Oh. And then uh, because of time, uh, time is different. Russia is a great country, very big one. And uh, when it was uh, TV, in uh, when it was aired yeah, in Moscow, it was not live and it was like k k cut. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, unlike this show. Unlike this show, I hope, yeah. And it was cut, and it's propaganda. It's not like really journalism. And is there Western propaganda? Western from the West? Uh, I don't know. I don't see Western propaganda. Well, maybe there is. Um, I don't know. I don't see it. I think that uh, uh, there are some standards of uh, for for journalists to work. And uh, I hope that uh, in Western countries you 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 um, are using these standards, and uh, unfortunately in Russian TV channels they're not using these standards. Well, let's hope so on on, on both sides. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.